Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to edition one of, you ready? Beach and Bake. So I can't do bake and sips because, you know, I have a little issue going on. So um, a good issue, great issue, but uh, it prevents the sip. I kind of feel guilty about it. I felt guilty when I was putting ginger ale in there and being like, hey, I recommend this wine, but I'm going to drink ginger ale. So um, it's Beach and Bake. So I'm at one of my favorite places. This is my beach getaway. So behind me, you'll see it's just, it's absolutely gorgeous here. So you guys can enjoy it too. And we're going to make homemade brownies. I'm gonna do a, these take like eight minutes. I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about slip and falls. I've been running into the same issues all week with slip and falls. People not understanding the difference between a slip and fall on public property and slip and fall on private property. So I'm gonna walk you guys through both of them because you really don't know until you know. And then um, we're going to finish these amazing brownies. Guys, when you make these brownies, you will never make brownies out of the box again. So. I love fudgy brownies. They are one of my favorite things. It's Antilla Nook ice cream, the vanilla bean one. It's unbelievable, can't be beat. My absolute favorite thing to eat in this entire universe is chocolate, dark chocolate brownies too, especially these days. Dark chocolate is just my jam. I feel like the milk chocolate just don't bother, right? You get that like, if you can taste like the burnt taste, it's because it's milk chocolate. Dark chocolate's great, gives you a lot of forgiveness and they're delicious. I love a fudgy brownie. Some people don't. What is the difference? the water to oil ratio. The more oil, the less water. So right, you still have to have the same, the same amount of liquid, but more oil, less water, the fudgier it is. If you might be one of those people, which I judge, I'm sorry, that likes a, I don't know, drier, cakier brownie. You might as well just eat a piece of cake, but that's fine. Um, more water, less oil, okay? So if it's a, it calls for, and I'm gonna make up a number, I don't know what it is. If it calls for, um, you know, a quarter cup of oil, and a quarter cup of water. You could cut it, or we'll say half a cup of oil, half a cup of water. You could cut it and do three quarters of a cup of oil, quarter cup of water, or something like that. But you gotta make sure the same liquid content's in there because chocolate absorbs it a lot. But the more oil, the fudgier the brownie, the better they are. I like it when like you actually like have to like really smack your teeth together. Um, I actually was trying these brownies a little earlier. That's where there's a bite out of one of them, and I'll show you. And uh, they're absolutely delicious. This is my favorite recipe, and you'll never make them out of the box again, I promise you. Most of us just kind of grow up that way. We're like, okay, brownies, let's make them out of the box. You kind of don't need to, but we're gonna do the same method. So firstly, my favorite, you guys know I'm like an all-clad freak, right? So these are my all-clad mixing bowls. I think they're like 70 bucks on it. I don't know. I have to have these mixing bowls everywhere I go. I have them at home too. They have the nice handle, so when you pour in everything else, they're great. Um, no all clad still hasn't contacted me and asked me to, you know, I don't know, use their products, give me something free, a spatula, nothing, but I'm still gonna promote it because I love these products and you get the best out of it. Nothing sticks and it's just not weird like a plastic bowl. So you want an eight by eight always for brownies. You go bigger, they're gonna burn, they're gonna get too thin. You go smaller, they're gonna be too thick. Eight by eight always. If you don't have an eight by eight pan, make a cake, okay? Eight by eight for brownies. Um, you wanna, so this is like the fun part of making brownies for me. It's teaching you guys how to prepare a baking sheet, okay, or a baking pan. So what you wanna do is take your eight by eight and you wanna always spray it with Pam, always. Then you take it and line it with parchment paper, then you spray the parchment paper. Brownies stick, they're chocolate, right? So this is why a lot of your brownies that you make out of the box fail. You want to always, always spray first, line, then spray again, okay? And then it works out perfectly. The spray again is not for the bottom, by the way, it's for the sides. Um, and this doesn't require a mixer, so I'm sorry guys, but you don't need to get your mixers out for this recipe. So we're gonna combine the sugar here, lots of sugar, of course, it's brownie, right? We're gonna combine our sugar, we're gonna combine our flour, Here's my flour. All purpose, don't use gluten free on this recipe. You're not gonna be happy with your results. And you're gonna take your cocoa powder. I always use Hershey's, that's the one I always recommend. Um, Godiva used to make one, I haven't seen it in a while, but the Hershey one is still always, the cocoa powder is my favorite. So we're just gonna throw this in here. There it is. Make sure you get it all out because this is what makes the brownie so good, right? And powdered sugar. Now your measurements are one and a half cups of granulated sugar, don't use Splenda, um, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour, two thirds of a cup of the, of the cocoa, and a half a cup of the powdered sugar, half a cup of dark chocolate chips, okay? And I already put it in here, but sea salt. 
you're gonna wanna throw in three quarters of a teaspoon of sea salt. I already put it in with the flour, so you don't have to worry about that, but you wanna make sure you put it in. Now, what you're gonna do is whisk, I of course grabbed the splat spatula, why would I not? You're gonna to whisk together, no, I was right. Yeah, you're gonna combine with our flat spatula, okay. Guys, I usually don't, I'm actually only with you guys looking at recipes. I don't usually, I just make the stuff. But because I wanna make sure I don't cut a corner or make a mistake, because I want you guys to have the recipe as it shows, that's why I always reference recipes. So I'm one of these bakers in the kitchen that just kinda of go with it. So my brownies may taste one way today, one way tomorrow. They all taste pretty similar and the same, but it's just a little different, okay? So here we go. Just gonna to toss it all together. There's a lot of sugar in these, so you just wanna make sure that you're, you know, Mixing it all up pretty good. So. Okay, now you're going to um, whisk together in a large bowl. So I'm just actually gonna reuse, do I need one more bowl? See, guys, if I did it my way, I would just have one bowl, right? But I need one more bowl, so hold on a minute. Have one more bowl. Here we go. All right, so this is the same set, by the way. So they come in a nesting set of three. So we have these here. So I've done all my mixing of the chocolate and all that good stuff. Large bowl, we're gonna whisk together our eggs. Our olive oil, so two eggs, half a cup of canola oil, always use extra virgin olive oil. And then we're gonna do our two tablespoons of water, which I already put in the oil, so you guys don't have to worry about that and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. So just give me one second. Let me grab my vanilla, because you guys know I always do extra, right? Just grab it over here. Did I already put it in? I might have. Hmm. It's the biggest thing of vanilla you've ever seen and I can't seem to see. Oh, they put it in here. Okay, here's our note. So we're gonna whisk this all together, okay? The vanilla really makes the flavor of these guys. So just FYI, you wanna make sure I've been having somebody prepare my ingredients for me before I get here, um, and it's a little hard at times to monitor what they have put in and not put in, so my apologies. Again, if I were baking, I literally come into the kitchen and I just bake. I've made these recipes a bajillion times, but again, I really want you guys to know what the ingredients say. I want to do a little extra vanilla though, hold on. Sorry guys, just give me a minute and let me see. Here we go. It's not my big Costco one that I have, but it's a small one, so here we go. You guys know I love vanilla, so this recipe calls for half a teaspoon, but I always put way more. So that's actually like, based on what was in there, that's like a whole teaspoon, maybe a little more, but it just makes it taste better. So we're gonna whisk all these bad boys together. I'm just gonna get a little more water because it's settling a little thick. Just a tiny bit, because we all know I don't like a cakey brownie. So I just added a tiny bit more because you still want it to have some liquidity. This is getting a little thick for me. Okay, so now we're gonna sprinkle the wet mix into the dry mix and stir just until you combine it, okay? So you don't, again, wanna use a mixer on this. You want to use your good old fashioned spatula. So you're just gonna combine it until just mixed, okay? If you go more, you're gonna potentially have an issue because you can't, you don't wanna over mix it. And you're gonna wear it just like I just did, so just get ready for that too. Because it's so thin with the powdered sugar and the cocoa, so just get ready for that. And as long as you're cool with that, you'll make these no problem. 
All right, so we're gonna talk about slip and falls. Now, why am I talking about slip and falls? It's the middle of the summer, because people still fall in the summer, right? So let me tell you guys why it's so important to consult with a lawyer if you slip and fall. I don't care where it is, I don't care why, I just I wanna tell you why it's so important to consult with a lawyer early. So what happens in Connecticut is we have all these crazy rules involving municipalities. And if you fall on property, and that property is owned by a municipality, then you, there's a rule in Connecticut called sole proximate cause. And sole proximate cause means that it has to be the sole proximate cause of uh, your injury. And the, you can't have anything to do, not 100% liability has to be with the municipality. The problem with that is that, guys, whenever you slip and fall, there's always comparative and contributory negligence, okay? Why? Well, for a lot of different reasons, okay? Like you should have been keeping a proper lookout. You should have looked up five seconds earlier. Like there's always a way that you can get to one to 2%. And once you get to 1%, you'll lose. The case goes away. It usually goes away on summary judgment, but if you get lucky enough to go to a jury, it'll likely go away there. The chances of winning these municipality cases are some to none. So. Why am I telling you that? Because you only have 90 days to put the municipality on notice, and sometimes it takes longer than that to figure out if there's a private entity involved. So the minute you get into the fall, you get your medical treatment, then you need to talk to a lawyer so they can do the proper investigation. If I'm a client and I get really injured, I want my lawyer to be able to be like, look, this looks like it could be a municipality case. We're gonna research it to see if there's private property. There's all these crazy rules, guys. There could be municipality property, but uh, private property is responsible for the place all the way up into the end of the sidewalk. It's just, you have no way of knowing, okay, until you actually do the investigation. And we hire investigators too. Get a lawyer. If you wait until day 70, can't help you. 80, can't help you. you. If you get a slip and fall case, unless it happens in a grocery store or something like that, I can't help you if you don't come to us in the first 30 days. Because we can, no attorney should, because we can't determine whether or not it's state or municipal. If it's state, you get a year to put the state on notice. Same thing, those sole proximate cause, okay? If it's municipal, you only get 90 days, and there's no getting around it. I, I, there's no getting around it, there's nothing you can do. I get asked by people all the time, look, I saw your video, I wish I did something, I didn't, can we do something? There is no way I can get around it, and I can do anything, guys, I can do anything. I can't get you out of that. Now, let's talk, though, about regular sip and falls. If you get the great news, I'm just transferring, by the way, I just finished mixing. This is how dark it should look. Look, it's black, you see? That's how dark it should look. And you're just gonna throw it into your pan. So I get this question all the time. Um, what it, uh, but it's, it looks like it was owned by somebody else, et cetera, et cetera. Guys, I'm telling you, you need to give the attorney plenty of time to determine it. You don't want the call later on. Now, sometimes it's inevitable. Sometimes the attorney doesn't know if the private property owner is responsible until, I mean, the insurance company plays ball and it could take a year. But at least the attorney's done the notices and protected your interest. So if you're stuck with just sole proximate cause, then at least you have the rights to move forward in the event that the attorney chooses not to move forward because it's a very, it's a not an impossible standard, guys, but it's a near impossible one. So what happens if you're one of the lucky ones that get the call saying, oh, private property is involved, we are good. Then the same rules of negligence apply, just like a car accident. You have to prove liability and damages. So if you slipped on ice because, I don't know, you were at a store and you got out of your car in a private parking lot, non-municipal, fine. Then we have to prove that beyond preponderance of evidence, which means greater than 50%, that the other person, being the property owner, was responsible for the um, that caused the, the damage basically they called the def caused the defect and that your injuries were a direct result of that defect much easier standard guys every day of the week I get settlements on those cases but that's only if it's not a municipality or state I, the, the state of Connecticut has done so much to ignore the the people that actually pay the taxes and to protect the state and the municipalities it's it sucks have this hard conversation with everybody every day. You're, if, you, if you have a municipality case, you're lucky if they offer you five grand, six, seven, ten. They're not going to offer you a ton of money because they know that you basically have a very slim chance of winning. If 100 of these cases are brought in Connecticut a year, <clears throat> 10 people may see actual money. So the chances are very low and the risk is very high in the very expensive cases. Here's what our brownies look like. Uh, we're going to bake these. We're going to bake these for 
at 325 for about, what does this say? Then I'll tell you what I do. Uh, 40 minutes. 35, I like a fudgier brownie. Let it cook. This pan's going to continue cooking it after the fact. Um, you know, guys, with slip and fall cases, notice is key. And we want to make sure there's insurance. If you slip and fall at, in a parking lot of a grocery store, there's going to be insurance, right, most of the time. But if you slip and fall on somebody's private property and they don't have a mortgage, they might not have insurance. These are all things you need to know up front. You don't want to go through all the work and the, and the rigmarole and the, and the, you know, the aggravation, the stress of potentially waiting and bringing a lawsuit to find out later, oh no, there's actually no coverage. Now, guys, I'm telling you, I just had this happen. There are times where it can take a year to get that information. The attorney's pushing, pushing, pushing. The insurance company won't give you the answers. You threaten the file and they're like, look, I'm not responsible. And if the private party is not responsible because they have a contract with the municipality or it's right on the cusp and it's not their issue, guys, the, the attorney's gonna direct you and advise you as to what the recommendations are. I, Unless it's an, oh, a very, very, very special case on these municipality cases, I am very careful to instruct my clients that um, about what their risks are, and it's just not the case. The cases are just not cases that we really get involved in. Um, whenever there's private property, this is why it's important to get a lawyer early so we can investigate and make sure there's nobody else, because the municipality will be. We want the municipality to be like, okay, well, we don't care if it's so proximate cause because we have a private party. Slip and fall cases, guys, regardless of what you fell on, you could be so sure, oh, it was on this property, this property. For all you know, it was an easement that the state of Connecticut used. You need a notice. Don't call. I'm telling you, a responsible lawyer is not going to sign your case if they can't pinpoint right away if it's a municipality or state and if your injuries do not rise to the level that it would make sense for you. Some attorneys out there, new attorneys, are like, I will take any case at all. I want to make money and I, I want to start my practice. It's not in the best interest of the clients, okay? So hire, if you got a slip and fall case, we settle these cases for six figures. I, I settle private slip and falls all the time. We settled two of them last week, one for uh, 205, one for 125, one for 80. I mean, we get real money on private slip and falls, these public ones, guys. It's just the statute you need to know is 13A149 for municipality. Take a look at it. Um, and that notice has to be sent, no if, no ands, no buts, and it has to be complete. It's got to be complete. Name, date of injury, what your injury is, how it happened, what caused you to fall. I always send an investigator out to take measurements and pictures. The more specific, the better, because the city always and the town always files something called a motion to dismiss, then they file summary judgment. They don't get on the motion to dismiss. A lot of times they get on the summary judgment. And sometimes, if you're lucky, we can garner an offer in between that point. So where, what is your takeaway from this? Get a lawyer. Get your, you fall, get medical treatment, then get a lawyer, all within the first 30 days. If you do not, you are putting yourself at extreme risk and get a personal injury lawyer. Not your friend's mother's cousin's brother. Get a personal injury lawyer because you need a lawyer that understands these cases. What I'm telling you is information. Because not just because I read it in a book. I didn't read this in a book. It's because I deal with this every day. I witness it. I practice it. I read the decisions on it. My name's on some of the decisions. Guys, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. I get on camera, I don't know, I'm talking to 100,000 people from all over the place. And I'm telling you, listen to what I say. If you slip and fall in Connecticut, sign on with an experienced, good lawyer quickly or you will lose potentially all your rights to even bring an action, okay? So um, I have brownies that are done because now we, we do things a little differently. Look at how beautiful these are. This is the one I took a bite out of, but you can see how chocolatey and amazing and fudgy they look, right? You're at the beach, a little Telenook vanilla bean ice cream, little, for me, ginger ale, for you maybe like, I don't know, what do you call these, high noons? I mean, it's a perfect, the birds are chirping in the back, I mean, it's perfect. I actually probably will take a nap out here later. Um, but what's better than having a great dessert and hanging out with you guys, right? Because, because of your support, I'm here, and the success the firm has had is all because of you. It's not just because of me. Um, I may be the brains behind the operation, but you guys are for certainly, certainly have a role in the success of the firm. Um, so if you guys have any questions about slip and falls, any, even if you're past that time I told you, talk to me. Happy to talk to you. Happy to try to help in any way. Even if it's to tell you no case, missed a notice. Yes, you have a case, whatever the case might be. Okay. Um, you guys know how to reach us. 203-399-0000 extension one. We're available 24 seven. You'll get a lawyer. I can't tell you how many times my lawyer on call this weekend was like, I'm calling, I'm from Golf Log, and they're like, I got a lawyer this weekend. Guys, when I tell you 24-7, it's 24-7. That is Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, Easter, Passover, it doesn't matter. Like, we provide you, you guys want to talk to a lawyer, as you should. 
you guys are going to get a lawyer. Then you make your judgment, right? Uh, you can come visit us 433 South Main Street, Suite 328 in West Hartford. I'd offer you to come to the beach, but it's a drive for a lot of you. And uh, this is my happy place. So, you know, this is where I do go to get away from work a little bit. But I'm going to bring it here because I have to share this amazing view with all of you guys. Um, and it makes brownies taste even better. And what else can I tell you? Um, bacon sips are going to continue. Um, they're going to be a little different in their scheduling. I think we're going to go once a month. Um, I am, uh, you know, four months almost. So <laughs> I'm getting to that point where like, you know, once a month is probably more appropriate. Then when the baby's out, all bets are off. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be, maybe I'll even have a guest spot. Um, you know, maybe my daughter will guest spot in one of the, uh, in one of the bacon sips. But well, maybe we'll do some like baby food and sips or something, right? That sounds good because everybody, I mean, when you have a baby, you need to sip a little bit, but we'll figure it all out. Guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate your support as always. I hope you guys learned something. Reach out to us privately. If you ask any questions, we'll respond. My friend Kylie is not here tonight. She's watching though, so she's going to give me all your questions and we're going to respond. And many of you keep asking to see the bump. How you can't see it, I don't know. I see it very loud and clear. However, uh, stop by the office and uh, you could come see me and I'm sure you will see it. Um, but um, you guys are so sweet. I, I've gotten so many great messages of support and I, I really, really do appreciate it. Um, it's, uh, it's been uh, a really amazing road to get here. So thanks guys. Enjoy your night. Enjoy the great weather coming the next couple days and tune in. Our new bacon sip schedule will be posted and we will be making some awesome stuff. And if you want a brownie, stop in. Thanks guys. Have a good one.